Geordie but Greenest. And I'm Susie from Windowsill Plants here at the Eco Village in Market Harbour. We're filming at the Eco Village. We've closed up for the day, but there's still some stuff going on in the background. So you might hear some of my colleagues. They might even make guest appearances um, <laughs> as we're going along. So just excuse us if we are a bit busy. So today we are going to talk about the most amazing plant. One of my absolute favorites this week is the prayer plant. Uh, so its Latin name is Maranta. Maranta, Maranta? Maranta. Maranta, Miranda. Uh, it's got lots of different varieties and we'll talk you through some of them. The most common one is the beautiful one with the um, pink leaf and that's um, Fascinator. Yes, and also known as the red Maranta or red prayer plant because it's yeah. easier. And then you've got some different varieties of the same plant. So this one is Maranta um, Kachova. This one's got a leaf curling up, but it's not a disaster. The reason it's curling up is because when a leaf is new, it comes out like a cigar. And so this leaf is currently unfurling. Oh, lovely. See, I thought it was curling up because it needs water and it was trying to save some energy because yeah. they do that too. Yeah, yeah. So um, just some... have a quick check, but you'll know if it's a new leaf because you'll be watching it with in awe. You'll know every single leaf of the plant. <laughs> you will, absolutely. So my absolute favourite plant in the world this week <laughs> is the lemon lime maranta, and it's because of the leaves. Firstly, the leaves on both of them, or all of them, I should say, feel a bit papery, which is kind of weird and amazing uh, to but me. But velvety. But velvety, and it's the colour. I, I think I've got a thing about... Um, lime colour anyway um, and, and it just looks like it's got a light switch on it to me it just looks so vibrant it is, um, it is almost neon isn't it well, it is that's fantastic no I love it no yeah. let's go neon I'll do this but I love the I love the pink on this I, you, I, I'll give you your lemon lime thank you and you can keep it <laughs> I, I'm going to have the um, the fascinator every single time because it's absolutely that bright pink just screams Amazonian rainforest to me. It does, and it and that's where it's from, the Brazilian Amazon forest, um, rainforest, and so that gives you your first clue on how to look after this plant. As you know, we're obsessed with, if you know where your plant comes from, you know what it's going to want, you know how to look after it. So it comes from that kind of equatorial Brazil, slightly higher up into to Central America, um, but it's a, a ground level rainforest plant. So you can imagine there's lots of leaves, lots of plants, lots of trees over this, so it's only getting the odd bit of dappled light. So your lighting is actually going to be low to medium, um, and it's perfectly happy. So I've had this for about a year, and it's it's continually pushed out leaves. There's another one coming now, um, and uh, this is in the middle of a room. One side is facing south, and one is north, and it's, and it's in the middle, away from both um, areas, so it's quite low light. Um, so it's absolutely happy there. You? I call it a sideboard plant because I think if you put it on a sideboard, nobody has a sideboard in front of the window, do they? I, I hope not. Monsters. Uh, so <laughs> have it on your sideboard and um, it's getting good general light in your room, but it's not getting bright direct sunlight because it is a little bit tender and prone to burning, isn't it? It is, yes. There's a few reasons why your plant might brown. And if it does, that's just part of it. That you still love your plant. They're, they're not defect in any sort of way. Um, and there's other reasons why that could happen. So you've got, we had a, we did a small, just a short video about watering, I believe. Just what, five, maybe half an hour. You can, you can go hour. back and have a look at that. That will tell you about the type of water that you want to use on types of plants like these. So we want to steer away from tap water, ideally. Um, and uh, you want to keep the soil quite moist and if you're not sure what moist feels like it's not sopping wet again you have these little gadgets like these that will tell you whether it's um, dry moist or wet but you want to keep this moist and I'm sure you miss these don't you I do miss them um, I'm actually erring on a little bit drier than moist <gasps> I think using my finger test I think you can go down to the first knuckle which is about a centimetre and a half and that can dry out for the top centimetre and a half can dry out on the, in the soil but if you're misting it there's enough moisture and humidity around it again amazonian rainforest 
think humidity. Yes, high, high humidity. Um, and if you can't get the humidity up in your house, uh, you don't want to miss them or you forget to miss them, then you can bunch all these plants together because as the moisture leaves the leaves, uh, leaves the leaves. Leaves, leaves. Um, leaves, leaves. It will create its own little environment, a little ecosystem of humidity. They love being with friends, don't they? They do. They so love being with friends. Um, and they will um, help each other out and um, raise each other's humidity. The other thing, or, do you, are you going to say about pebbles? Or I am sure? about to say that. You, Go on, you say that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. We've given away, spoiler alert, what's going to happen, is you could put um, some pebbles on the bottom of the, 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 the pot or on a on a saucer or a tray and then you keep the pebbles moist but the plant itself isn't sitting in water but that then allows some humidity uh, around the, the plant as well. So we're looking for about 50 to 60 percent humidity. Here I am with my gadgets again. This you've got your hygrometer that will tell you if you're not quite sure how you're doing with your humidity. This will tell you the percentage. Look at that 50 percent. It's perfect condition. And look this little smiley face. It's happy. As well as being a really super beautiful plant, um, the other defining feature of the prayer plant or the maranta um, is how it gets its name, why it's called the prayer plant. And that's because it's very um, dynamic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it has an awful lot of movement um, through the day and into the night. And um, you'll see that the whole plant moves, but also the leaves move. So at night, what happens is the leaves fold up as though they're in prayer. It's called the prayer plant. It's amazing. It is amazing. And there's lots of reasons or theories as to why it does that um, and how it does that, which Susie will go into. Um, but the, one of the reasons that I've read about is that if you can see this one particularly. Mm, there might, might be a better example somewhere. But this one particularly is very flat. And in the Amazon forest, they don't want water to be sitting on their leaves. So they move their leaves down to um, make them very flat so the water comes oh, off. I thought they were shaking the water off. Well, it depends no. how fast they do that. Okay. <laughs> They're very slow. Uh, they do move, but not that quickly, unless you do a time lapse. These are amazing to do a time lapse with, by the way. If you're into that sort of thing, you will definitely see movement in just a 24-hour period. Um, and so the water trickles off the leaf because it doesn't want it on the leaf in case it rots, and it trickles down into the ground to feed its roots. Yeah. Clever, clever plant. Plants are amazing. So actually, you do have to be careful with root rot with these. I yes. think they're very susceptible. To, to a little bit of root rot. Uh, so there's a whole science bit about um, Maranta and that's about why their leaves fold up um, at night. And uh, so they are nice dynastic and it's a way of saying they move uh, according to the darkness schedule. Um, it's just part of their circadian rhythms, which is what we all have. We do, we do, we need it for sleep. Um, and um, actually what happens is at the base of the leaf is a kind of gappy, crystally. when I said science, it's <laughs> going to be quite vague science. So there's this kind of um, chamber, let's call it a chamber, at the base of the leaf. And at night, oh, it's called the pulvinus, and at night that drains away and that then creates the space for the hinge of the leaf to come up. And then as the... Pulvinus um, fills up during the day, it kind of pushes the leaf outwards on a hinge. So it's all about hydrostatic pressure. Um, it's both complicated and amazing. It is amazing. A lot of the plants that we've been talking about up to now like to be nice and tight in their pot. Yeah. The maranta will take a little bit more room yeah. and grow into grow into a pot. Don't swamp it. In fact, with all house plants, never swamp them. But it will then take a little bit more more soil. And I would say it's just regular potty mix. There's nothing too special about this soil. You can add a bit of perlite if you want it to be a, a bit more uh, well draining. If you're an overwaterer, but. Other than that, it's pretty easy. I would this use a, I would use a one. three to one. I would add some perlite or vermiculite. Yeah, um, just, just a bit, to like give I it with this yeah, one, but not this just one. to give it a little bit more of a free draining. Again, imagine the rainforest soil. Oh, I guess yeah. it's going to be really kind of loamy and rich yeah. and great. 
So you do probably want to fertilize it due, during growing season, but really lightly, because that's another reason why you might end up scorching the leaves. It's over fertilization, kind of, yeah. the wrong water, not enough humidity, letting it dry out, too much light. In it, too much light. There's lots of reasons why this, um, this plant might brown. But at the same time, even after I've given you that big old list, it's actually a very it's easy really plant. It's really easy to and look after. I've had this about a year, a, over a year now actually, and it's consistently put out leaves. I've not repotted it. It's in the same pot that I bought it in. I bought it from Susie. Did you get it from me? And it looks like this uh, at the beginning. Actually, it may have been a bit smaller than that one. Yeah. So this has been very happy as it is. So these plants do flower and they're tiny. And really they look insignificant like, little flowers. Yeah, they are. But when you get in close to them, they do look like tiny orchids to me and they're a beautiful light lavender colour. Um, a lot of people like to just chop them off. So they put the, uh, the plant puts the energy into creating more leaves rather than flowering. I tend to just leave it alone. I, I take them off once they've finished flowering because yeah. it gets a little bit dry and then you can just um, pinch it off. Yeah. Um, and then perhaps that stops it setting seed and that puts the energy into leaf making more leaves yeah the flowers are lovely because often because it's such a beautiful plant people buy it for the leaf and then they get a nice surprise when it flowers so it's like a plant bonus <laughs> we love a plant bonus <laughs> Um, so you can propagate this plant, um, and, and I might do that to this one because it's starting to um, vine out a bit too much. So I think I will. And where you want to cut it from to propagate it is where you see these nodes. And nodes are quite easy to find on these plants because you can almost see some roots coming out there already. Um, and they're not they're that bump where you can see all the leaves collected together. So you would just snip it an inch underneath that node pop that into water and then it takes about two to three weeks to create roots and then you leave them in water until those roots are around an inch to two inches and then you can just pop them in the soil. I have heard people just uh, slipping that off and just put putting it in straight the into the soil. I like to water but propagate because you can see what's happening and, it's and you can check that it's got enough um, in there. The other thing that we uh, need to talk about is when you buy the plant often it's quite upright and you might have a plant that's kind of sitting up like this um, and then when you get it home it might droop so these are quite sensitive to new environments aren't yes, they yeah. so they do take about a week to acclimatize so don't panic you haven't killed your plant within like one day of having it um, it just wants to acclimatize and um, and then it's fine after that it'll find its own rhythm it will it'll, I mean it will still move up and down um, but you know it'll be happy but it, what it wants to do is to spread outwards so it wants to be a horizontal spreading plant and then as it gets bigger it will eventually drape it's not yes. really hanging it's a draping plant. it's a draping yeah yeah it is. Um, looks amazing in a um, hanger doesn't it oh what a good idea <laughs> <laughs> no it honestly really does um, so you'd put it on your sideboard to start with um, but then as it gets a little bit bigger and, and, and older you'd um, pop it in a hanger and let it kind of do its, do its thing, thing in the corner yeah so thank you for listening to us talking about our favorite plant today um do you know it just so happens that i have marantas <laughs> available oh brilliant at windowsill plants at the eco village in market harbour um they're available from all good plant stockists but you've got to be careful of the quality so yeah. make sure you're getting a nice established plant make sure that you don't panic if you do find that it's a bit floopy because it will acclimatize and be very happy with you um if you've enjoyed our video today, you can like, subscribe, please yes. send your comments. I mean, I don't know, are we answering comments? We are. Okay. <laughs> we are. Um, um, so we're very grateful for your comments, by on, the way. We're just and grateful that anyone's anyone even to listening to, to us it's talking amazing, about plants. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Um, so if there's a particular um, topic you want us to cover, by all means, let us know. And we'll consider that for the future. Maybe your favourite plant. I mean, if your favourite plant's Maranta, then we're probably not going to do it again. <laughs> and if your Maranta looks like this and you want to hang it in a nest, what I call nest, you can call them plant hangers. Let's start calling them nests, because that's kind of cool. Uh, then visit me at Green Nest. I'm at the Green Nest, at the dot Green Nest on Instagram and Green Nest on Facebook. And you are? I'm Windowsill Plants on Instagram, Facebook, 
all the things that the cool kids use. In fact, none of the things the cool kids use, just, <laughs> yes, just Facebook those and Instagram. Um, and I think you're supposed to subscribe and notify on these videos and then you'll find out when our next one comes out. So that's us for today. See you next time. Bye-bye.